Howdy ho, my algebra loving friends. Welcome back. Um, we're looking at algebra two and we want to talk today about lesson 121 in our Saxon algebra two book. So uh, it's close to the end of the book. So we're really excited about this uh, material that we're covering. And the good thing is it's similar to some things we've covered before. So I hope that that will be encouragement to you. The difficult part is you have to think a little bit. So um, you've done factoring, you've done inequalities. Now we're just looking at how do we, uh, how do we graph rational inequalities and how can we solve those? So it, it takes just a little bit extra effort than um, maybe first glance you might think, oh, just solve it this way, but you have to think about it just a little bit more. So if you look in your books on page 490 and 491, I would encourage you, take some time and read over those examples. If you wanna pause this and then come back, one really important fact I wanna point out to you is on page 490. So uh, let me give us um, our practice problem from this lesson and just talk us through why we need to set it up in this format. So uh, let's write down the practice problem. It says one is less than one is less than negative two over, and my denominator is x minus three. So this is where it be begins to get interesting, algebra two. We have not before had our variable in the denominator with an inequality, right? Well, I know that in your mind you're thinking, well, why can't I just multiply both sides by x minus three and then I can get my variable out of the denominator. That would be really, really great. The unfortunate part is because our inequality is there, do you remember the rule that says if I multiply or divide by a negative, I have to flip my symbol. So how do I know for sure that I'm not, that, that this variable isn't negative, and since it's negative and then subtracting three, it'd be even more negative. Well, if I'm multiplying or dividing by a negative, I have to flip my symbol. So now what do I do? I don't know if it's a positive or negative. Well, that's what um, the keynote in your book on page 490, and it has it in bold. So I would encourage you, look through your examples and read over that so that you'll understand why we have to take this extra step just to ensure that we're not multiplying or dividing by a negative. So what would I do? Well, we said before, if I multiplied by x minus three, that would fix it. But the problem is, I don't know if x minus three is positive or negative. So what if I square it? If I square x minus three, then I am guaranteed because if it were negative, when it became square, just like, let's take an example, negative three. Negative three times negative three would be positive nine. So whether it's positive or negative, if we square it, then we know for sure that it can't be a negative. That therefore, we don't have to flip this symbol. So that's what your book is going over and that's why the necessary extra step is there. So I hope that makes sense to you. If not, feel free to pause it, look over your practice example, especially example number one, and go back through it. Then you can unpause us and join us on our practice problem. So again, we're on lesson 121, and I'm going to erase this uh, since you are in the right place with us, right? So I'm multiplying both sides by x minus 3 squared. Well, what does that do? Well, that's going to eliminate the denominator, and it's going to eliminate one of those, but I'll still have negative 2 times one of them. So I'll have x minus 3, x minus 3 squared, because it was times 1, is less than negative 2 times x minus 3. Now let's spend some time distributing and working this out. So let's FOIL that first outer, inner, and last. First, x squared minus 3x minus 3x plus 9. Algebra 2, I hope you're getting to the point where it, when it is a perfect square like that, I hope you can do that in your mind and just know negative 3x plus negative three x is negative six x. I hope the more that you do that, the, the more um, that that will help, right? All right, so I've got this uh, that I'm, I'm working and then it's less than negative two x plus six, all right? 
So um, that's very, very important. All right. Um, and uh, now what I'm going to do is combine terms and work it together. All right. So x squared minus 6x plus 9 is less than negative 2x plus 6. Now, the dilemma is, um, the dilemma is I have variables on both sides. So what can I do? Well, let's add 2x and subtract 6. Add 2x and subtract 6. All right. So I've got x squared minus 4x plus 3 is less than 0. All right, now I've got a perfect quadratic here that I need to work out. That's my cat, Ruby. So I'm sure you can hear Ruby really desires to do some algebra with us, right? All right, so now what do I do? I'm going to factor this. All right, what are the factors? Uh, now, remember I start at the end. That tells me they're the same of, same of, minus. So the factors of 3 that are going to add to make 4 have to be 3 and 1. 3 is prime, so it has to be 3 and 1. All right, now, I know that these are my solutions, but the dilemma is I have to know exactly how to graph them and what it is. So when I'm looking at this problem, I know that, that these factors are less than 0. Since it's less than 0, what would be less than 0? A negative number. So in order to be a negative number, that means one of these has to be positive and one of them has to be negative. So your book breaks it down and shows you how to set it up positive, negative, or um, negative, positive, all right? So let's do that. So the first one, let's say x minus 30 is less, uh, uh, positive would be greater than zero, right? Greater than zero. And then x minus 1, since it's negative, will be less than 0, right? Let me uh, move this over a little bit. And then the negative would be x minus 3 is less than 0. Positive would be x minus 1 is greater than 0. So I hope everybody follows that there because this was set up to be less than 0. The only type of numbers that can be less than 0 are um, negative numbers. So I know in order to be a negative number, one has to be positive, one has to be negative in order to make it a negative number since it was a square, right? One positive, one negative, right? All right, so let's solve this. If I add three, then x is greater than three. If I add one, x is less than one. Now, let's take a look at that. If I'm graphing that, so uh, if x is greater than 3, now don't forget because it's less than, it should be and. So it should join together. That's very important because it's less, it's and, and it should join. If x is greater than 3 and it's also x is less than 1, does that work? If x is greater than 3 but less than 1, that doesn't quite work, does it? Let's try the other side. Let's add 3. So x is less than 3, but x is greater than 1, all right? So x could be greater than 1, right? Or uh, x would be less than 3. Now let's take a look at that. If I have negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, all right? So x is less than 3, but x is greater than 1. That would work, and it joins. x. In those cases, notice they're both open dots, and um, uh, notice it's not or equal to, so that's very important. It's less than, so it would join. Now, let's go back. I forgot to mention what it said our domain was, and that's really important. At the very beginning of the problem, it said domain equals reals, right? So if it weren't reals, the only solution, let's say that the, it had told us before that the domain was integers, then the integer, the only possible integer would be two, right? But it didn't tell us that it said real. So it could, it could be 1.15 or it could be 2.7892, right? We don't know what decimal place it could be or what fraction, but it's somewhere between 1 and 3. And since it's less than, it joins. Remember, less than land, 
less and it joins greater or we just remember that it's a uh, it's it uh, is a disjunction but a conjunction joins so this is the conjunction that joined one positive one negative so uh, this is lesson 121 and I know it requires a little extra work and you just have to kind of work through those and make sure that you're setting them up right it's easy for us to look at it and think, well, let's just multiply it by X minus three, but that's not going to fix it because in case it were a negative. So that's why we've got to multiply both sides by that perfect square. I hope that makes sense to you. And I, I hope you enjoy doing this lesson as we're winding down the end of algebra two. God bless you.